Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Vespa Zero Light Edition on the Nintendo Switch. A puzzle platformer with a sci-fi spin, is this one the next limbo or more of a miss? Well hit subscribe and join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily and let's get started. Story then here is wordless and for the most part it does a decent job. I will say there were moments where I felt a little lost in its narrative, but you will find documents that do their best to put into words what occurred in this world around you. You'll here though be taking on the role of Seven, an android lost on this planet and your role, trace the history of what is an ancient civilization. While its story may not be the easiest at points to translate, it is accompanied by some stunning locations, flashbacks and also then of course the impact of the aftermath to great effect. In the end I think it was worth it for me, though I will say a little slow opening to kind of dig itself out of general confusion. Gameplay then and it's a puzzle platformer where you find yourself armed with what's known as the drive gun. The weapon it can collect up light and use it in a number of different ways, a mechanic that kind of evolves throughout your time with the experience. It is also your only tool at hand, but they definitely find ways to leverage it in a number of fascinating ways. It is best though to start with this though, your enemy, a combination of android like creatures each with varying abilities and almost think a dark form that seems alien to the world and race presented to us. The enemies they have a variety of forms but think those that are fast, dog like almost, those that can fly and those that give an air of almost a spider though I will say guns in hand. The exploration though here it's simple, a jump function alongside aiming your drive gun with the right stick and then either consuming a light source or firing it towards something that's going to be attached to the left and right trigger. The creativity in Fespa though it comes in how you leverage this and later into the game you have the ability to hold more than a single bullet. Think here though as a few examples, removing light from a location, now why would you do this? Because you can tap the X button to hide in this world and let enemies pass you. There's an air of almost stealth to this experience. Maybe then you'll deposit the light in a structure which acts as a key to unlock the next gate that is blocking your way. You can even target an enemy and take control of them for a short amount of time. Now why would you want to control them? Some keys have a genetic lock or maybe you want to tackle those enemies surrounding you. You see in an enemy form you get access to what is an attack button, something our lead for the most part definitely lacks but taking control of them it definitely kind of provides you with a dash of more power. It's a fun system though that demands patience at times and curiosity in the sense I can see where a light baller would go but what does it do? The game rarely tells you this information, it's kind of like a trial by fire system. It then consistently escalates things as well, you know the puzzles ahead of you. Quickly though you'll uncover things like teleportation, lifts with a simple button interaction, beams of light that destroy anything that moves. The game though it sets itself over 6 levels, though I would consider the opening one more of an epilogue of sorts, definitely very short. It is though a unique adventure that often wears its influences on its sleeve, but it's also gotta say one of the better puzzle platformers I've played in some time. Problems then for gameplay and first off, some stunning camera work, but it can often pull quite a bit back from the action, it's definitely not ideal for handheld. Likewise the camera will move with the character but screen transitions they do occur, they are in fact frequent and I did find occasionally in the time the transition occurred my movement continued and I left myself in what I'd call somewhat of a bad spot like let's say the path of an enemy or even walking off a ledge. It feels very rare though I want to add that here but yeah it's definitely at times a little cheap with its deaths adjust a few of the locations and normally for this you can blame things like that screen transition. 
auto save then and for the most part I thought it was decent just occasionally though I would hit a location that felt like it had me maybe retreading a bit too much of the same ground. Finally for issues I had a moment in the game where it spawned more enemies over and over every time I loaded in and I had to actually quit the game and reload to correct this. It proved impossible basically to pass and they killed me before the game even loaded in. This was minor though, one issue, maybe in fact I'd say there's a good chance this will be exclusive for me and very few will face it. And you've got to factor in then as well, this is a budget experience, $10 or your regional equivalent. It's an impressive piece of work gameplay wise with the occasional like rough edge, but it lasted me right around I'd say 4-5 to five hours and it gives you a reason to even go back, you can see the impact on this world you made. Graphically then, I thought the game was, for the majority, stunning honestly. Limbo is, for many, the king of puzzle platformers, and that's where, for me, the influence here truly shows. It's similar in the sense here, it works with silhouettes for the character our lead, and even the environment. It's of course though here adding colour instead of sticking to a monochrome format. Some of the scenery though, just stunning, towering mechs in the background, you know, disabled, they litter the environment, and I just couldn't wait to see what came next. During exploration then you'll be moving indoors and colours often create the theme almost for each location and yeah, it was just impressively crafted. It rarely changed the theme but it just kept the transitions in place to create this kind of sense of variety. It also helped you distinguish maybe what locations you hadn't been to before because it's very simple to remember what colours you've almost overcome in this world. Finally, for graphics, animations, they capture that sense of an alien-like life form. Particularly impressive as well when it distorts the screen almost when you are attacked or you are in danger. The only issue then, I will say that I noticed some pixelation. It's a game that uses the foreground to create depth and just occasionally when it was close to the camera, it was quite noticeable. Again though, look, this is minor. I think many will be impressed with its overall style. Audio finally then, and it's solid work. The world packs the occasional what I'd call ominous sound effect and weapons, enemy sounds. They have, I'd call, simple but effective effects. And then the music, I would say it's more ambience over anything else, but it helps in reinforcing this alien-like atmosphere. Occasionally then it even breaks out into what I'd call more traditional musical themes, but yeah, it definitely continued to impress. So overall, a Fespa, it's hopefully going to get attention because it's a budget experience that's doing a lot to impress. Sure, look, it has issues, the narrative, it takes a little while here to get going and honestly, it's almost easy to get lost in it at points. I urge you though to read the data points you find scattered around the world, just to add a little context of what is occurring around you. This though, then it's reinforced with some stunning visual and audio design and yeah, sure it has its problems, the gameplay, it's creative but there's very little in the way of handholding, can kind of be like I said, trial by fire. Likewise then it's impressive cameras, but they can also be a distraction at the same time. At this price point though I just see very little here to question. It even packs I'd say a decent 4-5 to five hours of gameplay and that's before you head into the bonus content. With that in mind, the big issue I'd say is I had that one technical issue that was quick to resolve an over spawn of a particular enemy type. But for me it's a great 8 out of 10 and if sci-fi limbo sounds like your thing then Fesper may just be the game for you. It's even priced more than fairly again like 10 bucks or your regional equivalents. Will you be adding this one to the library then or holding onto that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.